Hi guys, great to be here with you today. For this final part of 1 Peter, we take a look at those in leadership roles. This part is one of, 1, of 1 Peter is written to the elders. And when I say elders, it doesn't have anything to do with Warhammer, unfortunately. It means those that have been entrusted by the church to make decisions for the sake of the whole church. They have a responsibility to not just be at church, but to be kind of in charge of the whole church. They seek God's will and guidance for where he wants the church to go and move forward. And they try and make that happen with the help of everyone, not just themselves. Not everyone will be an elder though, but those that are, they should try and look at what uh, look after the church as Jesus would. Peter gives details of what elders are to be like in 1 Peter 5 verses 2 and 3, saying, Do not pursue dishonest gain, but be eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but examples to the church. And even though not all of us will become or even are elders, I don't think this is a passage we should overlook because of that. Seeing that everyone can do those kind of things, not pursuing dishonest gain, being eager to serve, just like Jesus was. Not all of us will have the title of elder or leader, but it doesn't mean that we don't have a responsibility to look after others and our church. But if you're unsure of where, whether you're meant to be an elder or in some sort of leadership in church, then a great place to start is by asking God. Ask him if you're called into leadership and how you can serve the church in any way. The word elder does make it seem a little bit old, but it's not always. This passage speaks to everyone. It goes on to say from verse 5 that you who are younger, submit yourselves to the elders. All of you, clothe, your, clothe yourself with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud and shows favour to the humble. This verse is saying that those that are younger should look to those that have the wisdom and discernment of God to learn from them and their faith, just like the disciples of Paul or Peter would have done. Knowing that Jesus is the perfect example we should follow, but seeing these people in person and learning from what they say and what they do. This passage is aimed at everyone, basically. If you're in, leadership, if you're in a leadership role, then to do that role in the way Jesus would have. Not doing it for yourself, but doing it for others. But if you're not in a leadership role, then to listen to what those in leadership say, take on board what they say and do. But the main thing that comes across from this whole passage is that humility is the most important thing. That whatever you do, do it in a humble way. Don't make a song and dance about what you're doing or how you're doing it. Remembering that the glory belongs to God and not us. Remembering that we could probably only do what we just did because God has given us the gifts to do that. And remembering that Jesus died for us all, he made a way into heaven for us, and he was the humblest man alive. Whatever we do, let's do it, in a hum let's do it humbly, giving the glory to God.